Hi, today let's unravel one of Ultimate's greatest mysteries. How many characters should you play in Smash Ultimate? This seems simple, right? Just pick who you like and move on? But no, this is a mystery which is coming up to its fifth year and it's still unsolved. Let's solve it, or at the very least, discuss why it's such a headache to get a clear-cut answer. First step today is to introduce our schools of thought at a competitive level. The mixture of character rosters you'll find. There's a bunch of labels that extend beyond what I'll say, but that's all semantics. So we have solo mains, co-mains, and counter pickers. We're going to first explore what these labels are, their strengths and weaknesses, a case study of each, and finally, we're going to look at the current state of the meta holistically for what it's proving to be most effective. Let's get this show on the road. Ah yes, the simplest one first. A solo main is pretty straightforward. Players who play one character. Examples include Light, Gluttony, Sonics, Big D, and Asimo. At a basic level, this approach makes the most sense. You can dedicate all your focus, practice, and time towards this one character. No worries about what character or player is in your way, and if that requires a counterpick or whatnot, you really do get to see the benefits of solo manning at any level of play. Whether they be your local character specialist, the peak of your region, or a top 50 player. The character mastery, ability to maximize even the tiny advantages in poor matchups, and general creativity compared to other players who use the character alongside other characters in rotation. So what's the issue? Fairly simple. People get bored. In a roster of 89 characters, it's so hard to stay on one character all the time without getting bored. Even in tournaments. The other reason, put simply, is no matter what character you play, and no matter what copium a character specialist tells you, there is no single character in this game that wins or goes even with every other character. But that's on paper. Most solo mains ignore this weakness, as they choose to maximize the small advantages in their losing matchups to work their way through. Think about someone like Peanut. It can be done, but for solo mains, they all understand that depending on how good their character is, they understand the quality of their toolkit determines how hard they'll need to work and how creative they'll need to be to overcome the shortcomings of their character. Overall, solo maining is by far the most effective method to learning the game effectively as one lens for understanding the nuance of the game and allowing mastery over coverage. Our next group up to bat may on first glance seem similar to counter picking, but there is a difference. Co-maining is the act of playing two characters at an equal level with the assumption that you have two mains. Examples include Tweak, Spargo, Proto Bannum, Shuton, T, and Riddles. This is a method which combats the biggest flaw of solo maining, tackling both the boredom and inability to combat all matchups. This typically, however, isn't seen until higher levels of play, as you're splitting focus on your character roster. Instead of total mastery of a character and being a lens to learn the game, your characters fill specific roles in matchups or when in a pinch in a set. If we think of Smash characters like a toolbox, this is like bringing two different ones onto the worksite as a cautionary measure. What co does is sacrificing proficiency for coverage. So now it's pretty obvious to see where the downsides come from. Maintaining two characters to be bracket ready and to be playing hot from first bounce is a bit tough. You'll either choose to double your practice or cut it down the middle between the two characters when at times remembering what skill sets belong to which character can get you in trouble. The coverage is a risk as it sacrifices pure focus on one character. Overall, co maining is the safe middle but will often mean players don't have as excellent mastery over their characters thanks to dividing time across their two characters even if it provides greater coverage. Our final group are the counter pickers. Counter pickers often aren't anchored by a main and weave between their pool of characters based on opponents, stages, or whatever they're feeling on the day. Counter picking is the act of picking your character based on what decision your opponent has made to counteract it. Examples include MKLeo, DeBuzz, Riziasu, Hikaru, and Abadango. If solo maining gives mastery and co maining gives coverage, counter picking is like having an advantage on a check in D&D. In theory, you should win in a scenario where you know how your opponent's character and stage will benefit you. Yeah? Well, not quite. Let's come back to this once we break down further strengths and weaknesses. Counterpicking's strength of coverage is spread further than it is in co maining You're not just picking a character that might win in the scenario, you're picking someone that will be far more advantageous. This can include something like Kazuya on FD, or Game & Watch if you know your opponent will play Fox or Pikachu. You sacrifice mastery and coverage for an exact answer. It's almost formulaic in a way, with an approach of, if my opponent does X, I will pick Y. This seems like a surefire way to victory, right? No, obviously not. We discussed in solo maining how mastery can triumph difficult matchups, and this is very true against counter pickers. The fox who has played him day in and day out for years will probably beat the counter picker on his week 3 game and watch. 
Counterpicking unfortunately relies upon spreading yourself thin and relying on basic knowledge checks and whatever fundies you have to outdo your opponent when 9 times out of 10, any player above low level is unlikely to have a counterpick work on them. Overall, while counterpicking is lucrative with the amount of characters there are in Ultimate and provides the quick fix scenario in a pinch, it ultimately creates more problems than it solves. Players begin having guilt about picking the wrong character when they lose on counterpick and in future lead to a massive character crisis by spreading themselves this thin. Alright, we've taken a look at our three factions with some names attached and some strengths and weaknesses. Let's get practical. First, I polled some people to ask what mixture of characters is most effective in the current meta. As we can see, co-maining is far and away the most popular choice. Interestingly though, a number of players acknowledge how effective solo maining is up until a high level. Fairly interesting to think on, but this is all just opinion. Case study time. At the time of writing, 13 majors have occurred, and grand finals have featured 9 solo mains, 13 co-mains, and 4 counter pickers. Let's start with level up expo winners finals and grand finals. Here we have Tweak, who during these sets played Diddy Kong, Sephiroth, and Wario, classifying him as a counter picker in this tournament, while Light exclusively stuck to Fox, making him a solo main. In these three sets, there were 13 games played. Light won 7 of these games with Fox, while Tweak would win 3 out of his 6 games he used Diddy Kong, 2 out of the 4 games with Sephiroth, and 1 out of the 3 games with Wario. Ultimately, Tweak would take the winner's final set, and Light took the 2 sets of grand finals and the tournament. What do these sets tell us about counter picking versus solo maining? While Tweak's trial and error proved to be effective in the first set, it was when Tweak rotated his roster more in the grand final sets that Light began to break away. Even when Tweak was swapping characters to disrupt the rhythm of Light, it proved to be ineffective. What these sets demonstrated was when you consistently stick it out with your character of choice, in longer form sets, the player who holds firm and backs their character in to be the lens of their adaptation is what triumphs over those who use their multitude of characters as ways to disrupt flow and adaptation. Next up we have a duel of co-mains. Here we have Shuton vs Mia in the two sets of grand finals at Kowloon 5. Shuton would use a mix of Aegis and Olimar, while Mia would use a mixture of Mr. Game & Watch and Steve across the 9 games played. Shuton's Aegis would only be used in one game and would end up having Olimar win 6 of the 8 games played. Mia, meanwhile, was more back and forth with his character picks, as Game & Watch would play 7 of the 9 games, winning just 2 games, while his Steve would play 2 games and win 1. After Game 1, Shuton would sacrifice using his Aegis and an advantageous matchup based on the knowledge that his Olimar was playing better on the day. This is a sign of a great co-main. The decision making to know when one character is playing better despite the matchup. Three of his game wins with Olimar would also include winning with multiple stocks on the board, while Mir would only win by multiple stocks when Shuton used Aegis. Shuton buckled down and showed when you have a greater understanding of how both your characters are operating on the day of the tournament, you can outwork your opponent as no one quite understands your play like yourself. Our final case study is a tale of throwing everything against the wall versus the consistent wall. Here we have Kameme vs Shuton at wave 4. For context, Shuton has only been beaten by Kameme twice across all of Ultimate, with the most recent loss coming at Seibugeki 13 in March. At Wave 4 we have two sets between these competitors. There are 9 games total, with Shuton winning both sets 3-1 and 3-2 respectively. Unlike in our previous example, Shuton plays just the one character, that being his Aegis. Kameme however would swap between Sora, Mega Man and Sheik despite currently being known for Sora. Both are playing outside of what is normally expected. The co-main becomes the solo main, and the solo main becomes the counter picker. Across the 9 games, Shuton won 6 of these games, while Kamehameha won 1 out of the 6 with Sora, 2 out of 2 with Mega Man, and 0 out of 1 with Sheik. This points to what we discussed earlier about counter pickers, who can get guilty about when certain characters fail. By pure numbers, Kamehameha should have been playing more Mega Man throughout the sets. Kamehameha, however, has proven of late to be far more dedicated to Sora, and there was no guarantee that if he did play Mega Man, he would have been able to close out more games. These sets demonstrate how the consistent wall of a solo main can really bring out the counter picker's dilemma. So with all our discussions, examples, polling, and case studies, let's try and make a call. What is the best right now in Smash Ultimate? How many characters should I play? I could say, that depends on what's fun for the player, but that's a lame cop-out. Looking at trends of recent results and players, we can deduce that what is proving to be most effective right now is players who can utilize two characters that may have to not only apply coverage, but one character may need to be used even in scenarios where they're not advantageous due to the other character playing cold on the day. Here we are entering the fifth year of Smash Ultimate, and knowledge check picks are becoming exceedingly rare or are proving to be ineffective. Players' second characters need to match the pace of their mains. It's now about being able to have that situational awareness to know that if you're going to risk a character swap, 
it needs to be purposeful, or it needs to be doing the equivalent role of the main when the main isn't operating at its best. Does this mean everyone should be a co-main? No, absolutely not. What this means, if you are going to be a solo main or a counter picker, you need to understand the inherent risks involved with taking these routes compared to those who choose co-maining and have specific plans for how you'll mitigate those risks. But at the end of the day, this is just my two cents. Feel free to share your opinion on this topic in the comments, but I've said my piece, and now I'm out of here. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.